What's up guys, Dylan Rush here with Cage Side Press, joined today by a UFC flyweight, boasting a 4-1 professional record, Juan Camilo Juan 100, Ronderos, did I say it right? Say guys, right. Ronderos. Ronderos, okay, got it. Uh, the 100 nickname, Juan 100, who gave you that nickname, how did that come about? Oh man, that's uh, my boy Tony Murphy gave that to me, um, I didn't really have a nickname, um, he, he used to, couldn't pronounce it, my first name. So he just said 100 because I had a 100% winning rate, and I didn't know as an amateur yep. before I know as a pro. Um, obviously, that one loss kind of killed that for me, so I'm, I'm in the middle of maybe possibly changing that. Uh, but that's where the 100 came from. You were 9 0 as an amateur, as you said, yeah. 4 0 as a pro leading up to that UFC debut. You lost that one, what was it David D Dvorak? Dvorak. Yep. Yeah. What went wrong for you, or is it. I feel like the first <laughs> loss is always like it's a turning point for some fighters. Like it's a crucial point where there's some takeaways, where there's some things you learned about yourself in that loss. Man, that loss was I don't even know how to explain that. It was uh, it was a ten hour notice. Uh, UFC called me at like eleven o'clock at night on Thursday. Hey, can you make weight on tomorrow at nine a.m.? I told them, yeah, I can totally make weight. You know, I was hungover, I had party that week. <laughs> um, but you're not gonna say yeah, no to the UFC. You know, fighting the number ten in the world, I was number sixty nine in in, uh, in rankings. Yeah. And uh, man, it was God sent. It, it was a blessing. Um, it, it was all a dream, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't even. It didn't hit me until after I got home. Like, oh shit, did I find the UFC? Yeah, oh shit, man. did I got choked out? You know. Um, it made me better. I think if I would have won that, my uh, pride would have gone through the roof, and I wouldn't have grown as a person, as a fighter. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm thankful for that loss now. You know, you don't see that then, but. It's all right. No regrets about taking that fight. Not at all. No regrets. I'm in the UFC. Been in the UFC for two years. Oh yeah. They taking great care of me, um, and it just made me completely better um, than if I would have won. I think. So I met you in Arizona originally. Yeah. We were together in Las Vegas. Were you living there, or were you just there for that one of those? I was cornering uh, a few friends in that. Event. Was it free customer were you cornering or no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah really? That he was, was here yesterday. Yeah. yeah, yeah I got him up. I'm gonna. Well, a great training partner. So you got it. Got injured recently. Like he's. I think he, he got, got a shoulder. His uh, so shoulder. Uh, Surgery got it fixed. Okay. Uh, totally, even I think, and now it's fixed. So. Maybe we'll see him back in the cage later this year. Oh, very soon. So yeah. you're fighting an Arizona guy next. Yeah. Clayton Carpenter. Yes, sir. He's at the lab, right? I think I've met That's him a few right times. Here. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you know about him? Have you seen any film? What makes him a good stylistic matchup for yourself? Um, he's definitely a good fighter. Um, I feel like he's nothing special per se. I mean, we're all great fighters. Every UFC fighter is mm -hmm. an amazing fighter, nonetheless. Um, definitely have to respect his power. Um, I think that I just have to do my own fight, not worry about him at all. Just be in my own head and do what I came here to do, do what I've been doing for 15 years and kick ass, man. I, I'm not at all worried about what he has to offer more or what I have to show uh, to the UFC because I've been out for two years, man. I've had a tore arm, this thing, that thing, a whole bunch of things that have kept me from the cage. And so that I just want to get back in there and enjoy it, have fun. He's kill it. He's undefeated, but it feels sweeter to take that O off his record, or you don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> it will always be sweeter to take somebody's O, just uh, because I was undefeated at one point. Yeah. Um, and in, in the back of my head, I still think I am. You know, I was basically sacrificed to the MMA gods to to keep David's fight going. So. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Um, you know, a ten-hour uh, notice camp versus his three-month fight camp. Yeah, you know, yeah, of I course. Knew, so. Uh, yeah. Dennis Davis. Yes, sir. He was just in here and just interviewed him. So you came here, XC, when you were 16 years old? Yep, I first started out at Tap Out uh, before they changed everything out. Uh, I started there for a couple months, then I came here. When I was about 15, 16, uh, I can't even remember the, the exact age. And uh, Dennis David, Roman Isabel, and Eric Nixick took me under their wing again with uh, Tim Lane, rest in peace to my brother there. Um, and then just grew me as a fighter from, from teenager, man. I made the amateur team when I was 17. And then just been uh, evolving me ever since, and still are, still be evolving together me as a fighter and uh, them as coaches, and uh, extreme born and raised, and now I'm in the UFC. <laughs> and what what brought you to, like what got you into MMA though? Like I know you said you were 15 to tap yeah. out, but what made you want to do this? Were you a big fan of the sport from watching it? Or? I, I was a big fan of the sport. Um, Definitely when I tried wrestling in my high school, man, but I couldn't really get into it. I hated just not being able to do more. You know, so after uh, the wrestlers were done, we would have, me and a couple of my friends would have a, a deal with them, like, hey, we'll clean your mats and we'll clean everything if you just let us train. You know, and then after the wrestlers were done, me and like five of our guys would just train MMA. Like, we didn't know jack oh. shit what we're doing. We just kind of beat each other up yeah. and pretend to know what we're doing. Yeah. There's actually a video of us like beating shit out of each other in, in, uh, <laughs> in the wrestling mats after. And, 
we just kind of created an MMA club. I brought it up to the principal. He was okay with it, and uh, we had the janitor to be our our, our advisor or coach, and that's kind of how it grew. And then eventually, um, you know, I looked through a couple of gyms and I found the Extreme Couture, and uh, the, the rest is history, man. And this is home, yeah, home for good. Home. Oh yeah. What can you tell me about the crop of flyweights and bantamweights you have here at XC and just in Las Vegas in general? It seems like mm. a lot of amazing bantamweights and flyweights out here. Monsters, bro. Monsters. I mean. Uh, ever since Tejudo saved uh, the class, I mean, everybody's just been getting bigger, stronger, faster, better, and more. Uh, Br uh, Brandon Moreno and friggin' Figgy, amazing wars, making uh, a name for us, smaller guys, you know. Um, and just the competition is getting elite, man. I mean, if, if you're not on top of it, you're going to fall behind. And that's why I try to grow more and more every day, not only physically, but also in the aspect of the chess match, aspect of my grappling, aspect of the striking, just staying ahead of the curve so I can become what I want to become in the champ. Who's winning tonight, Figgy or Moreno? Oh man, my heart's with Figgy, and, uh, but my brain is mo with Moreno. Uh, really, most me. people, no, it's the opposite. I'm sorry, I yeah, 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 okay. Excuse me, that, that out for me. Your brain's with yeah, Figgy? The, my brain is with Moreno and my heart is with Moreno. Figgy is, is a monster, but I think Moreno is just that, it's just hungry like that. Mm -hmm. He just came from the bottom and I know what that feels like. And you have nothing to lose when you came from nothing. I mean, Figgy did the same thing, but he's been at the top for so long. Moreno has been back from adversity uh, for so many times, mm -hmm. you know, that I think that, um, I think that he's gonna get that tonight. I mean, it's, a, it's back and forth. They can, either one could win. Uh, Figgy's power is just ridiculous. You mentioned one of the all-time great flyweights, Henry Sudo. I know you look up to, I think, more than Sudo, Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson, Johnson yes. Do you That's think he's going to get the job done May 5th? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Adrian Ross 3? Again, he's just going to get tear right through him. Yeah. Tear right through him. I, I have gone with him once in my life. I've never felt ragdolled like that before. Really? Man, Where was that? Was just a monster. He was here. Here? here. Really? <laughs> here. Uh, wow. He came with us one time, and, it, and I, dude, it was it was amazing. Uh, him as a person, is he's great, you know, um, and just as a fighter, just uh, I think he's the goal above anybody else. Demetrius Johnson is the goal. It's a good take. It's a good take. Uh, 2023, is this going to be a more active year for you? What do you expect from yourself? What do you expect to show the fans in this this 2023? Just year? expect them to show me who I am. Um, what I can, what I can bring to the table, and, and who I am as a person, as a fighter. Um, in 2019, I fought four times in nine months against very elite people, two titles, uh, ex UFC fighter. I mean, that's me, man. I just like to fight. I love to fight. Um, there's a time in my career where I've had to have breaks because either people won't fight with me, or uh, injuries. Um, and my last official actual fight camp was four years ago. Wow. So the last fight was a 10 hour notice, so I don't count that. You yeah. know, um, but my last That's actual weight cut, my last actual 10 hour notice, dude. That's crazy. Ten, I, I missed it by two pounds, had to pay him three grand. So, but it's fine. I'm in the UFC now, so I'm grateful for everything that happened. Everything worked out. Yeah, it's supposed to be how it's supposed to be. You don't see that now, but my faith is stronger than that. So, well. All right, last question. Finish every interview with this question. You might have heard me ask Dennis. <laughs> I got to ask you when it's all yeah. said and done, fighting, training, whatever it may be, what do you want people to remember most about? One, one hundred. One that I up. never gave up, man. I never gave up on my dreams. I, I had, a, I'm a man. I used to be a manager for a dental office, making eighty thousand a year, and now I'm making almost nothing, zero. You know, um, and that I gave it all for my dreams, and that everybody else can do it too. I'm no different than anybody else. I'm five foot three, one hundred and forty pounds. Nothing special about me, except here. This is it. Just my mentality, and, and with God's grace, anything is possible. And, and I would come here to show everybody what I already know. That's great. That's inspiring for someone like me who's trying to do the same thing in my own yes, right. Sir. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Juan Camilo, thank you, man. man. That's a wrap. <laughs>